So here it is, my keg. Getting the sanitizer out of it at the moment, putting it in my bottling bucket just for some storage. Um, and then I'm going to get the beer in here. Uh, I got it going through my siphon here, so that way my siphon is all sanitized for when I want to san uh, sanitize it, suck it out of the fermenter, the secondary, and get it in the keg. Uh, I've got the lid for the keg down in the sanitized uh, bucket here. Uh, everything has already been sanitized. I ran um, some PBW through here at one point. Um, I just realized I didn't run any of the sanitizers through the beer lines. It's probably a very important thing. I did run the PBW through it, but I think before I empty the keg entirely, I'll hook it back up to my pressure and run some sanitizer through um, the actual beer line so that's sanitized as well. So let me grab all that stuff and we can get really started. All right, got my beer line. Um, this is just a maybe if I hold it in front of the lens you can see what I'm talking about uh, it's a beer picnic faucet I don't have a fancy um, nozzle or anything yet faucet yet uh, this should do the trick for what I want to do with it for now and then eventually I'll get the fancy stuff set up um, this is a ball lock keg um, there's probably videos out on YouTube that are going to explain this a lot better than I do since this is my first time ever doing this and I learned most of what I know about the old kegging stuff from YouTube. Um, but this is just a ball lock. You retract the collar and there's little balls that lock into uh, the nozzle here. It just kind of slips on. You push it into place. Oh, what's going on there? Oh, that's right. There's no pressure in here yet. Uh, I'm just going to run some pressure through it. Um, in this case, I'm just going to turn on my gas just enough to get some pressure built up in the keg. I don't know if you can hear the gas go going in there, but there's definitely some gas in there. I just want enough to uh, get some sanitizer through the beer line here. probably hear it. Uh, I can't tell on my little viewfinder if you can see that or not, but I'm just going to get some sanitizer through there. And that way I know my beer line is sanitary as well. So there shouldn't be anything funky growing in there. I don't really need too much. Mine's got a pressure relief valve here. I guess some don't, but this one I was smart enough to get with. And what I'll do is I'm just going to put my beer line right in the sanitizer if I can get it back off of there. It seals on there pretty good. Uh, my keg kit did come with new gaskets, but it also came pressurized, so I knew the gaskets on it were uh, actually in good shape. So I chose not to um, remove the gaskets and put any new ones on. So I'll just disconnect the gas here. Um, that way you can take the lid back off. And I'll finish. Ooh, can you see the steam coming out of there from the CO2? There's a little bit of fluid left in there. I'm just going to dump it in my old bucket. Now that I've got a clean and empty keg, no longer smells like soda. Well, get me some beer in here. Which is pretty exciting. I gotta go grab that though. That's down in the basement. Alright. Got the beer in the secondary here. We're gonna get that out and get it in to the keg, which you can just kind of see a corner of in the, the corner of that picture there. Um, this should be a pretty simple process. I've done this part numerous times of getting it out of a carboy and into another container, usually another carboy or the bottling bucket. Um, so I guess no time like the present to try it. I'll take the bung in the airlock out. Smells pretty good. So 
still got a little bit of sanitizer in the line. It's not supposed to be a bad thing. Moment of truth, there goes the beer into the keg. You can see a little bit of that liquid in there filling, whoa, not if I move the camera like that. You can see the liquid filling up in the keg there. Nice and smooth. Uh, there's a little tube on the end of the gas line. I was told to want to leave it a little bit lower, the liquid level that is, a little bit lower than that. Um, so that's my goal. I have it here on the floor so I make sure it's nice and level. They say it can get up the, the, um, the gas line. I think I said liquid, but that's the gas line. The little, little dip tube in there. But they say that it can get back up through that tube through your gas line and into the regulator and, and that can ruin the, the regulator. So we don't want that. Um, it's filling up pretty nicely. I may have to sanitize a couple bottles too, I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be close. Okay, moment of truth. We got the beer in the keg, we got our CO2 up here. I'm just going to turn the pressure up a little bit in here so I can get some uh, pressure on the old beer. Pretty much everywhere that I've looked says to get it to about 30. That's what I'm working on here. And just a little more, maybe. Ooh, a little more than that. I got a little jam nut on mine, so I'm going to tighten it up, make sure I don't accidentally turn that up any. It's a little bit under 30. So I'm going to take my gas line, as you can, well, you can't see because it's below the level of the camera, but I have two gas lines on this regulator. Uh, so I'm just going to pick one at random to put on my keg. It's a little harder when it's up above you here. Alright. I'm going to turn the, the regulator back off. I'm just going to get me some... gas in here. I want to get the oxygen that's in the top of this out. Pretty much everywhere I said to do this like four or five times. That's twice I think if my counting is correct. It's actually jumping above 30, so I might want to turn it down a little bit here. That was better. That was right at 30. One more time. All right, now I'm going to put some actual pressure on here. We're going to move. Helps if I adjust the wrench to the right size. it up just a smidge. So it actually reads at 30. I turned it down a little too much, I guess. My, kit, my regulator is still not I haven't even taken the plastic off it yet. Can't really read the uh, regulator very good. I guess that's not a good idea. A little higher than I want it here. I'm just 
going to turn it down. That works too. What I'm going to do once I get it to pressure, I'm going to put it in my beer cooler. Leave it sit overnight. I'm going to leave it just under 30, and uh, we'll get it in the cooler. Ooh, boy. All right, I apologize. The lighting over here kind of sucks, to put it mildly. Um, but I don't really feel like going to get all my lighting and everything to make it brighter. I think you'll be able to see well enough to what I'm doing. Um, this is my beer cooler. It's a chest freezer. Um, you may have caught a glimpse of it on another video that I've done. Um, just has a temperature regulator. Um, set at Right now it says it's 35 degrees in there. That's about where I want it. Um, I've had bottled beer in here as well as my first home brew and it seems to work pretty well for that. Um, now we'll get this keg in it that's just at a camera shot and see how it goes. Um, let's get the old camera a little closer to see what we're doing because we like this jumbly camera action. It's a lot of fun. And it'll probably be even better lighting over here, you know, further in the corner, in the dark, and that kind of thing. Alright, so there's my cooler. Like I said, I do have some bottles in here. It's not all homebrew. Um, I still enjoy drinking a couple commercial brews now and again. This is actually a one that I've just discovered. This is a Long Trail IPA. They're out of Vermont. That's an excellent beer that I, that I really enjoy. Um, this is my homebrew. Got six bottles left, so I better get this uh, other one that I've made carbonated, or in the cooler at least, and cooled down and carbonated. Let's get it in there, just be gentle. I don't want to dent the bottom of the cooler too bad. Okay, we got the keg, gas line hooked up, CO2 tank in there. Um, it's set about 30. We're going to leave it in here overnight. I'm going to check on it again tomorrow. Turn the pressure down a little bit. And uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully I've done a good job carbonating. Um, let's close the lid to keep some of the cold air in there. Huh? Uh, well, I'm going to sit back and enjoy a beer. Let that cool up for the night. Check back in with it tomorrow. Okay, moment of truth time. Uh, it may not have been in here long enough yet. Um, I actually changed my mind a couple hours after hooking up the CO2. I turned it down to about serving pressure. And decided to wait just a little bit and see if that worked better than to try and actually force carbonate it. This is the first pour off the keg. Ooh, look at that. Give it a chance to settle down here for a second. I haven't tried this beer at all yet. An extra pale ale. First little squirt kind of made me a little nervous though. But it looks like it's got a good, you probably can't really tell, there you go. Good little bit of a head on there. Um, beer is a little cloudy. I don't know if that's from the CO2 or not, but let's give it a little quick taste. Hmm. I think it's still, whoa, excuse me. I think it's still a little bit too soon to drink. Um, I'll try it again in a couple days. It still tastes a little flat. 